Welcome to another video tutorial from tdkmartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create a mosaic effect using dashed lines. With a true vector brush missing in Affinity Designer, the best thing I could come up with was the pen tool, the node tool, dashed lines and tapered strokes. Let's start with a circle and build a rough outline of the design. I am creating a blue tang, which is better known as the dory fish. I convert the circles to curves and edit them with the node tool building the basic shapes. Duplicate the eye and use a, another copy of the eye for the fin. Again, converting it to curves first. Duplicate the fins to create a rough guide before placing the mosaic tiles. I duplicate and modify a lot. It speeds up the creation process and gives me shapes to work with later. I avoid too much detail and tight angles to make it easier to place the mosaic tiles. This level of detail will do. I change the stroke and its width, color the shapes and adjust the layering, putting the fins behind the body. And we have a very simple version of the fish. I place these shapes in their own layer called design outline. I lock that layer for now. Mosaics are usually made of little squares. Manually placing them even with the power duplicate is not that feasible. Instead, I'm using the dashed line. I create a straight line with a pen tool, assign a color to the stroke, set the widths and turn it into a dashed line. I set the first value of the dash pattern to 1 to give me a square and put a lower number in the second value. This will define the gaps between the squares. I duplicate this line, place it in my design layer and I can now use the node tool to curve it. The squares of the dash are deformed to match the curve and I can lengthen, curve, modify my line and my soon to be mosaic tiles will adjust. To make the tiles stand out I select my outline layer, add a color overlay to darken all those shapes. I use the node tool and adjust the second line to the tail fin. I try to end the lines with a large enough, preferably a full mosaic tile. Version 2 has an option to adjust the pattern to your line, which makes it a little easier. Unlike the solid strokes, the dashed line don't offer me a pressure curve. For the fin, it would be nice if I could taper the lines. The workaround I applied for this project is a line with two strokes. I turn a copy of my initial line into a solid line again and add an additional stroke in the appearance panel. I make this second stroke a dashed line, add color and width and set the width to be larger than the original size. The pattern now overlaps the light blue underneath. I changed the dash pattern, wanting the first value to be small and matching the gap of my initial mosaic line and the second value being a 1 to give me a square gap. Seeing strokes come with blend modes as well, I can now change the blend mode of the second line from normal to erase. Erase takes out whatever is below it, so it takes out the gaps I created with the second stroke from my first stroke. Now I have a solid line with a pressure curve that I can adjust while the second stroke creates the gaps. This gives me an easy to adjust tapered dashed line. 
I can manipulate the pressure curve into any curve I want, making it taper at both ends by lowering the sides and raising the center. Remember to keep the scale with object option unchecked. I copy one of those lines from my experimental parts layer into my design layer, give it the right color and can now adjust it with the node tool to match the shape of the fin. At this stage, I speed up the video. I will be doing a lot of adjusting, copying and more adjusting while trying to fill the parts of the fish with my mosaic lines. An interesting effect when you work with the contour tool and lines is the way the contour tool reacts to closed lines. I get an outer shape. When I open this shape and create a line with a gap, the contour tool will create a line around the line, which gives me a quick way to fill my shape with mosaic tiles. I continue to duplicate, modify and place the lines, trying to avoid a too even pattern using the tapered line along with the dashed line. I use the pressure curve to adjust the tiles heights in order to best fit the space. At this stage, I'm not worried about tiles overlapping. Those overlaps can be fixed easily. I fill the small areas with shapes created with the pen tool. I convert the contour into a curve to be able to edit it with the node tool and take out segments by holding control while clicking on those segments. I create a circle for the eye, give it a dashed outline and adjust the tiling. In version 2 that is easier to get an even pattern on a shape like that. In version 1 you have to fiddle around a little bit with the width of the stroke and the size of the object. If you have seen prior videos you might have noticed I love to duplicate and reuse elements I already have on the screen. They are there to grab and modify, which to me feels faster than creating new elements from scratch. With the tiles laid down, it's a good time to save, create a new version of the file as the next step is going to be destructive. I will turn the strokes into curves by expanding them. It's no problem with the dashed line, the tapered line creates two curves.
I need to cut the gaps from the base by using the boolean subtract. Another problem is that in version one, this process has to be done for each curve individually. Selecting them all and expanding them cause the program to crash again and again. This issue does not occur in version two. I have the lines, I select them all go to file, expand strokes, and they all turn into curves. This includes the tapered lines. I still have to go in and combine the dash with the tapered line via the boolean subtract. Heading back into version one, I have my curves and can modify them with the node tool, delete excess shapes and shape the tiles to match. It is a lot easier and faster to edit straight lines than it is to edit curved ones. In order to speed the process up, I select everything, turn the corners to sharp, thereby turning every curve into a straight line, making it easier to move nodes this takes a while, so I speed up the video while I move nodes, erase shapes, add a few shapes with a pen tool and adjust the spacing between tiles. Seeing I don't need to see the different shapes any longer, I set the overlay on the shapes to 100% black, giving me a plain black background for my tiles. The next step will be the coloring, so it's a good moment to save the file. I create a few circles for the main colors that I can use with the color picker. I want to have a few variations of the main colors I've used so far. A lighter tone, one or two darker tones to make the tiles look less even. For that task, it's ideal to work with the HSL setup in the color panel. As you can see, these are still not individual tiles, but clusters of tiles. If I color those purple ones slightly lighter, it colors all of them. They need to be broken up into individual tiles. I select everything, use the boolean divide, and 82 shapes turn into 318. I select multiple tiles, use the color picker, pick my color, and color away. I try to avoid too many shapes with the same color next to each other, while at the same time trying to achieve some shading of lighter and darker parts, like the fins go lighter towards the right, the eye is slightly lighter at the top, and the body gets the pattern of a blue tang. With the color in place, I move my circles away from the main design and into my parts layer. I can hide that one, I won't need it anymore. And add an effect to the tile layer. I select the layer and add a 3D effect to add depths to the tiles. I adjust the radius to just get a slight light edge and a tiny bit of a shadow. You can adjust the direction, you can make them more or less shiny. For now I'm happy with just a slight light edge. In order to match that I add a outer shadow to the layer with the shapes adjust the angle to match my light source and define the offset. For even more color variation, I want to add some lights on top. For that, I create a mask. I copy all my shapes 
from the shape layer combine them into a single curve using the boolean edge. This silhouette shape will clip my white rectangles with a gradient fill, a Gaussian blur and a layer blend mode set to overlay. Once I move those shapes inside, they get clipped to the silhouette. At this point, I call the design done. There are a few minor things that still need fixing, but I hope I got the idea of how to create a mosaic pattern in Affinity Designer across with this video. It is not a one-click solution. It does take time. Overall, the recording took an hour. I condensed it now to a little over 15 minutes. But it was fun. It was worth it. I tried it with different shapes. The butterfly with the wings being symbols. So I just have to do one side. The flower with the petals being symbols and then rotate it to make it faster and easier to create. And a goldfish as a test run for this video. To create the mosaic effect, I used the pen tool, the note tool, dashed lines and tapered strokes, as well as Affinity Designer's unique ability to have multiple strokes on the same object. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, click on the notification icon and I will see you again soon.